I've been using Bevy and Rust to make games for over a year now, so I decided that it's time to put my skills to the test and use them to participate in the GMTK Game Jam. For those of you that don't know, the GMTK Game Jam is an annual game making competition that challenges game developers to create a game in 48 hours which follow a given theme. If you found this video entertaining, make sure to drop a like and subscribe, it really helps motivate me to create videos. This year the theme was roles reversed. As soon as the theme was announced, I started to brainstorm and come up with an idea that I thought was pretty unique. So you know how in a usual game, the player plays as a hero, sometimes a human, who shuffles through dungeons killing all monsters on sight? Well, I'm going to be doing the reverse. You play as a monster who attempts to kill all the humans that you see on sight. Now you might be thinking, isn't that just the same gameplay but with different sprites? Well, you would be wrong, because in my game, the humans will be defenseless and trying to escape from the monster, which is more realistic in my opinion. The player will then attempt to kill all of the humans before they escape. The art style that I decided to go for in this game was hand-drawn 2D because I thought it would be a nice change of pace from the usual pixel art games that I make. So I dug up a drawing tablet that I had tried and failed to use when I was younger, pulled up Photoshop and got to work on creating the player sprite. It took a while for me to get the hang of, but I think I did pretty well for not having made any hand-drawn 2D games. The character that I drew was not meant to be imposing and large. I wanted to at first trick the player into thinking it was weak, but then when the player sees how small the humans are, they become aware of its actual scale. After I finished drawing the main character, I plopped him into the game and started tweaking his movement. I'm really sorry about the FPS of the current recording because I accidentally forgot to change the maximum FPS settings in OBS before recording this. The tile editor that I'm using for this game is different from what I usually use. In all of my past tile map based games in Bevy, I've used LDTK or the Level Designers Toolkit. Although user friendly, I quickly found out that this editor is only really suitable for pixel art based games as high resolution tiles freeze the editor. So I switched to tiled, which itself came with a bunch of headaches and had me spending the entire first day on fixing collision issues, which still persist in the final release of the game. I'd like to take note that the first day of the game jam had already ended and I had accomplished nothing but a basic laggy platformer controller. I ended up staying up until 2 o'clock both days due to the time that had been lost from switching tile editors. On another note, I had added a cool parallax effect, which added some depth to the art in the game. Now I don't know if this is child related, but if you look in the bottom left corner, our FPS is skyrocketing. It's reaching levels above 1000, and that's with many applications open such as Photoshop and OBS Studio recording the whole thing. With LDTK, I had a maximum of 500 FPS, but this could also be due to the updated Bevy version. Others might point out that we don't even have a completed game yet, but I'd like to disclaim that the final release of the game still had around a consistent 1300 FPS on my computer. I decided to change the color of the background to purple because it was a lot less jarring than the red that had dominated the scene prior. It was finally time to add a way to change the levels. This presented another headache as I had to adapt to the tiled editor which contained tile maps in many separate files, unlike the unique room structure of the LDTK tile editor which was completely contained in one file. I also added a tunnel system which basically teleported the player in between several doors to add that extra level of depth to the gameplay. I thought this would make the game a little bit more unique gameplay wise. At the moment, it just awkwardly snaps the player to the other location or level without even playing at least an animation, but that will be fixed later. I created an animation for when he enters the doors and I think it looks pretty good. This sprite will be black when he's entering and it will just be normally tinted when he's exiting. You can see this in action right now and I think it looks pretty smooth for not having any other transitions but the animation. I think this is a good time to discuss exactly what the art direction in this game is going to be. You can tell that I'm going for more of a cartoony art style, which is inspired by Flash games. I think they are unique due to their simplistic style and cartoony art. I don't know why, but the art style and Flash games have always appealed to me in a strange way. This is the start of the first level and you can see that it is completely empty except for a few NPCs that are supposed to give the player direction on how to play the game. But for now, they are just silent and non-programmed because I haven't gotten started on this level yet. You can see that there is a certain degree of slipperiness and acceleration that the player obtains when moving around. These controls are inspired by that of Super Mario Bros. 1, which contains a similar mechanic that allows the player to have to learn the tighter controls of the game in exchange for a higher skill ceiling and more engaging play. I'm hoping that adding this mechanic will make players panic when the humans are very close to escaping and they are stuck on a platforming segment. Now it's time to add NPCs to the game, or non-player characters which will be responsible for in-game banter and let the player know what's going on. They will also help them figure out what exactly the goal of the game is, along with how they should go about achieving it. I added an interact text which will hover over the NPC when they are close to the player. Ignore that I spelled interact 
I-N-T-E-R-E-C-T. -E -E this gets fixed later. Another thing that the NPCs will do is turn to face the player when they talk, which I'm hoping makes the player feel more like they're in the world. You can see that there's at least one or two NPCs in each room that give the player direction or just banter with them. There are particularly a lot of NPCs in the first level because the player needs to know what's going on and they're going to explain to the player what exactly he's going to do. I also added yellow directional arrows which will tell the player what path the humans will be escaping from. If you are wondering why the arrows show they are hovering on the air, I will later add tiny ladders or small bridges visually which the NPCs will explain the player cannot use due to their size. If we take a time check, it's already 7 o'clock on the second day of the jam and I had only 17 hours left of the jam. This was including my second night of sleep. I decided to go hardcore and stay up until 2 because it was the only way I had any chance of finishing on time. Now it's time to explain how I added humans into the game. They are the core mechanic of the game and I think it's better to show you in the editor rather than explain while the gameplay runs. You can see that I've created two different categories of objects represented in object layers, human spawners and human paths. The human spawners are given two properties, one being count which is the amount of humans that they will spawn until they stop spawning. The other is id which will help the human paths decide which spawner they belong to. The human paths are basically nodes that represent a path of positions that the humans will go to one by one until they reach the last one. Once they reach the last one, they are counted as escaping. These paths are given an index and id component. The index is just the position in the path list that they belong to, while the id corresponds to the spawner that they belong to. I'd also like to note that these ladders and small bridges that you see, you can't use those, only the humans use those, so they don't really collide with you. This is hinted at by the NPC in his dialogue which tells us that it's a shame we cannot use their tiny ladders and bridges the same way they cannot navigate our tunnel system. I'm sorry that it doesn't show up on screen because OBS only renders one window. With this done, all that had to be done was to lock the player into the room while they are dealing with the humans. I did this by adding a barrier at the end of the level which would only stop detecting collisions with the player once they had devoured all humans and let none escape from their grasp. Once this barrier is down, the player can enter the door and be transported to the next level. You may have noticed the effect that occurs when the player kills a human and how they fall like paper down from the screen. This was easily done due to the players not actually having any collision with the actual level, so it wouldn't be too performance intensive to spawn a lot of them. This would allow the player to bash through them with satisfying movement. I also meant to add camera shake and particle effects to the game, but considering I had stayed up until 2 to cram the core mechanic into the game, Level design was my top priority here. This first level is designed to teach you about the platforming of the game, as well as how to actually play a level. It relies more on movement than anything else other than entering a tunnel. Another thing to note is the UI on the top of the screen which shows how many humans are left and how many humans have escaped. It's pretty crude, but that's because I was lacking time. But it does the job, so I'm not complaining. The second level is a more methodical level, it doesn't really require that much skill, you just have to enter each tunnel and run through them, but I guess it introduces the player to the mechanics of how they have to really think about how to approach each level. I'll fast forward each level once I explain them because I don't want this video to be 11 minutes long. I'll admit that the third level is actually kind of difficult. There are 750 humans in all and they all come from below the ground, so it's hard to bulldoze through them because gravity acts on you while you're doing so. I don't even beat the level in this recording. I've beaten it once, but it's really difficult, so I don't really beat it in this recording. And with that being said, if you liked the video and it entertained you or helped you in any way, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Have a good day.